People don't know what fasting is or what it's about, and and uh, and we we wanted to educate people a little bit, you know, on fasting. And so this morning, I actually planned on bringing a message from John 15, where you know. Uh, it's a message on bearing fruit. You know, as Christians, we need to bear some fruit. You know? I mean, really, if we're not bearing any fruit, we need to take a real look at what we're believing in and what we're trusting in. I mean, i just got to be honest, because we're to bear fruit. And sometimes we're in the pruning stages where we're getting snipped on and clipped on. But, it, but man, fruit's got to come forth. So, so anyway, but anyway, I on doing that all week. And then we started fasting Wednesday night. And uh, we've been uh, we we end our fast today at noon. Hey, it's noon. Oh my goodness, it's noon right now. So, so uh, you know, and, and they say, well, you're not supposed to make it vocal to everybody that you're fasting, because then you're drawing attention to yourself. We're we're drawing attention to God, but we wanted our body, the Journey Church body, to fast with us. And some of you are fasting with us. Some of you are going to fast later. Uh, we just happened to fast already, and ours ends today. And I have to for my job purposes because I, I'm a home builder and I've got some busy stuff fixing to take place. And I got to have my energy, and, and God's given me supernatural energy today because yesterday, last night, I wanted to break the fast. I couldn't. I didn't think I could do it. And sometimes when you fast, that's the way it is. It's like all the hell comes against you. But sometimes all of heaven falls on you like it did this morning. And, and yeah, and so, you know, fasting, there's some principles to fasting that I shared on Monday night or Wednesday night. Some of them are, are uh, the lengths of fast. You can fast a half day. You can fast a full day, 24 hours. You can fast three days. Paul fasted three days. Uh, remember when uh, Jesus, Jesus struck him down on the road to Damascus? And, and, and he couldn't see and, and uh, he, didn't, he didn't eat or drink and he couldn't see for three days and you know God changed his life uh, Peter fasted when Peter fasted God gave him a message a message to take the gospel to the Gentiles I mean you know the, the, the Jews and the Gentiles they didn't they were enemies you know they didn't get along and, 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 and Peter boldly under the anointing of God took the message to the Gentiles. Thank God. Yeah. So there's there's all different uh, scenarios in the Bible. Jesus fasted 40 days. Moses, Moses fasted 40 days. When Jesus was fasted, I mean, why would the Son of God need to fast? Because he knew there were some things that could not take place unless he prayed and fasted. Yeah. Amen. So if Jesus fasted, I think we ought to fast. I think we ought to be, as Christians, people that pray, give, and fast. Jesus came to give. He gave his life. Jesus prayed. Jesus fasted. <clears throat> well, the purpose of fasting, it, it, you know, it, it, let me just tell you this. You're not going to, it, it's not for you to get what you want. It's really to, to block out all the distractions in your life. Sometimes Facebook, the newspaper, the news, the gossip, the slander that's going on all around me, all the junk that takes place in the church and in the world gets me so distracted, I can't hear from God at all. And you know what church congregations want? They want their pastor to be holy. They want their pastor to be someone that's been with God. How can you be with God when the church fights and argues and slanders one another constantly? So this stuff takes place. So we have to separate ourselves and get alone and dethrone King's stomach. Jane and I have been doing liquids. We've been drinking water and some uh, chicken broth. It's great to have a little chicken broth. <laughs> Hey, but, hey, in my kitchen on the island, there's some tangerines and some bananas. And every day I've walked by them. <laughs> and I've wanted a banana so bad. Hey, I had my self convinced this morning that they were going bad and we were going to have to throw them out. And my mama taught me not to waste food. She taught me to eat everything on my plate. And I was convinced that I needed to 
eat one of those bananas, the devil was on my shoulder telling me to eat one of those bananas. And God gave me the strength not to. Hey, hey, well, when I go to Lucas in a minute, I'm getting, I'm getting one of everything. No, no, really, you got to be moderate and you got to ease back into it. I'm going to have me a little salad and maybe a little mashed potato. I'm just going to ease back into it. But Pastor Ronnie and Brenda have been fasting with us. You know, Brenda's probably in the nursery and Rodney's on the camera. And listen, if you're watching online, you can, you can give an offering online right now. I'm just warning you, if God lays on your heart to give an offering, you better do it. People watch online and they don't think that they're, they're you know, they're part of the body. And they can worship God with their giving online too. And don't do it unless God tells you to. M I L L I O N. In case you want to give a million dollars. Hey, one day, hey, listen to this. I hope you're alive when it happens. One day, someone's going to give this church a million dollars. Amen. And they're going to do it because God told them to. And they're not going to do it because we need it. I hate it when they say, well, we need it. No, you don't need nothing but God. We only need God. Okay. So the fast. There's all different types of fast. There's an absolute fast where you just drink water and you don't eat any food. And depending upon the length of the absolute fast, you might add some chicken broth to give you some energy because I still have to work. So I'm, I'm not able to. Sometimes preachers can uh, stay at home for seven days and stay in the Word and stay in an attitude of prayer and, and just drink their water. I'm not fortunate enough to be able to do that at this time, but that's okay. I, I can get a little chicken broth, get a little energy to take care of my business. So, anyway, an absolute fast is that. And then there's the Daniel fast. And we have a copy, if anybody wants it, of what you can eat on the Daniel fast. And the Daniel fast is really good. It's, you know, you're doing away with bread and sugar and caffeine and all that meat. No meat, no dairy. You know, the, the Daniel fast is just vegetables and fruit. And we typically do that every year. Every year, whole grains, you can do whole grains. Every year in the past, we've done seven days of liquids only, and then 14 days of vegetables and fruits and liquids only. So it's a mixed, it's mixed between the absolute and the Daniel fast, and we've done that for 21 days. I planned on doing that this year, and God kind of spoke to me recently, just do a three-day fast. I'm going to give you every, I'm going to download into you everything you need in three days. Praise God. So, ours is fixing to be over. Uh, did I tell you ours is over at noon? Yeah. Just reminded me of that in case anybody has a sandwich in their purse. <laughs> yeah, Esther, she, she, she brought out a good point. Esther called for a fast for all of the, 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 Jew, all the Jewish people. And I'm telling you what, it was an absolute fast. They were getting ready to be wiped out. And God rescued them the whole nation of Israel because one little woman a big in the black eye oh my goodness so thank you very much man. I better start off with some green beans instead of a pig in the blanket so anyway I want I wanted to encourage you you know we're out of time so we're not going to preach a message today I, I preached to the 9 o'clock service uh, but God did a lot here. He did a lot of ministry. And we want to see God's ministry take place more than my preaching or anything else. Because God can do more by His Spirit than we could ever dream of. Now, preaching the Word is good. And, 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 and the worship service is good. But when God moves by His Spirit like He did this morning, miracles manifest. So, so anyway, we want to encourage you, if you've never fasted, don't bite off more than you can chew. If you, if you consider this your church home, fast. This is the first month of the year. God talks about giving the first fruits or, or the first of everything to Him. So you can, in the first month of the year, you can give Him a day. You can give Him three days. You can give Him seven days. You know, I wouldn't suggest you do anything outside of that unless God unless you know you 
got medical supervision for it, or God really told you to. But I'm telling you what, in a 24-hour period, you can fast, and you can, you can talk to God, and God, God will talk to you. Yeah. And, and, and God can do some things. Hey, one day is tougher than you think. But, but just do what God lays on your heart, okay? Okay. Uh, I, I actually want to do this first. I, I, want to, I want to talk about man church for just a minute. Courage is necessary to change. If you're a man in here, it's going to take courage for you to be what God's calling you to be. And it's going to require change. We need to inspire. We don't need to inspire. We need to require men in the church to change. Amen. Got one amen. But, but it's true. See, change scares us as men. We want to do what we've been doing because that's been comfortable to us. I'm telling you, you can change. By the power of God, you can change. Courage is really the virtue. It's the, it's the quality or the attribute of life that enables men to face disapproval. It enables men to face discouragement. It enables men to face failure. Courage gives you the strength to get through it. Courage will, will enable you as a man to face death. One day when I take my last breath, I want to do it with honor and dignity. I want to just go into heaven knowing that I've done the best for my family and my son and my church and my community. That's the kind of courage we're teaching men at Main Church. It takes courage to face reality. How many of you know we live in a real world? We got a real devil. We got some real issues. We need to learn how to be real men. Second Peter one verse five says this: Add to your faith virtue, which really means moral excellence. It means a manliness. It means courage. When you add to your faith virtue, you're adding to your faith manliness. You're adding to your faith courage. You know what? It makes me sick. I've done it. I don't do it anymore. But men will change everything in their life. They'll change wives. They'll change jobs. They'll change churches 50 times. They'll change everything in their, their life. But they won't change themselves. So at Man Church, that's what we're going to learn how to do. I'd like to hear the men say, Amen to that. Let me share with you just a couple of things. And then we'll go home. Because I'm really so hungry. My stomach's growling. <laughs> All I wanted to just tell you is, is just a couple of high points. Every time you, you get an assignment or a call from God, every direction, it has to start somewhere. It, every, every assignment for you and your business, it has to originate somewhere. I believe God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts and plans I have towards Linda. Thoughts and plans to prosper you and to give you a hope in the future. Thoughts and plans not to harm you. So God has a plan. And, and it originates with Him. But we've got to slow things down long enough where we can hear from Him. God, I've got so many distractions going on in my life right now. There's no way I can know what to do next. You know, we've got to slow things down, dethrone King's stomach, and hear from heaven. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice, and they listen. And I know them, and they follow me. Who are you following? Who are you listening to? The Bible in Romans 12, it says, present your bodies as living sacrifices to God. Giving, praying, fasting. How am I going to hear God's voice? How am I going to know the plan God has for me? Where should I live? Who should I marry? What job should I take? Is God calling me to the ministry? How am I going to know what to do? It can be found in the, in the, in the Word of God and in fasting and praying and seeking God. The Bible talks about three things in the book of Matthew. Jesus said these words. He said, when thou fast, when thou pray, and when thou give. So evidently, Jesus wants us to know a little bit about giving, a little bit about fasting, and a little bit about praying. 
I told you Paul got his assignment for his life on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9. Uh, Peter, Peter got his calling. I think it's in Acts 10 or 11 when, when he got a vision. And God showed him a vision. Uh, and, and really it was the message was just to take the gospel to the Gentiles. So, and, and they get these visions and these words from God after they fasted. The book of Joel talks about how fasting prepares you for a new anointing. You know, my prayer is that we'll have a new anointing for this new year. God's going to pour out the rain and He's going to pour out revival on our land and on our church. Oh, I love the message Bible. A lot of times people says, you know, we're waiting on God to move. We're waiting on God to move. No, God's waiting on you to do something. He's waiting on you to humble yourself and pray. Second Chronicles says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. I love it in the Message Bible. The Message Bible says, and my people, my God-defined people, respond by humbling themselves, praying, seeking my presence, turning their backs from their wicked lives. I'll be there ready for you, God says. I'll listen from heaven. I'll forgive your sin. I'll restore your land to the hell. Can you imagine if every American... What if we did like Esther right now? Esther right now, we said... Or what if President Obama said, You know what? I'm calling a fast throughout all of America. I want every American to fast and pray for three days. We're going to drink water. We're not going to eat. We're going to pray for our country. We're going to pray for our church. What would happen in our country if that happened? Oh my God! Oh my goodness! The little kids say, we don't say oh my gosh, we say oh my goodness. You know, yeah. So let's start right here. You know, the people say, ah, oh, it doesn't work. It ain't gonna work. I've been around 70 years. That ain't gonna work. Well, why can't it work? Why can't it start right now, right here? Why can't it start on the corner of Calico 937? Amen. Why can't we do something together as a body? Why can't we stand together in unity? Pray for one another, be tender-hearted to one another, esteem each other higher than we esteem ourselves, instead of lifting ourselves up, let's lift you up. Why can't we do that? Why can't we be the chain? Why can't we be the star of something significant? Right here, right now. Why do we have to wait and let the big churches do it? Why can't we do it right here, right now? Why can't preachers in this town come together and collaborate instead of compete? One preacher said, I'm coming out there and I'm going to dominate. Really? Why can't we work together? We can. If we don't get all puffed up and proud. See, we don't have to have the biggest church in town. We just have to have the biggest God. I mean, the biggest God. God, our God is big. Our God is greater. I built a church building. This has been tearing me up. I built a church building. Where God, I went to the church. I was a contractor and built the building. And God was doing amazing things in that church. And the devil came and destroyed it. Now that church is an Indian temple. It makes me sick. I'm, I don't hate the Indians. I don't hate the Buddhists. I just love God. And I want there to be more churches everywhere. Yeah, more people in them. What do those people represent? They represent souls changed. Okay, let me just tell you this. Fasting is a weapon. It's a source of power. Now, I know I'm not the best at what I do. I know that. I, I, I'm to have help from on high. I have to seek God and fast. God will, will make you the best at what you do if you'll seek Him and you'll fast. He'll do things through you that you never dreamed you could do. Maybe you're in a place of desperation today. Put Becky on. No, Grayson, come play. Grayson, will just play.
We honor God and we worship God by presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice to God. Holy and pleasing to Him. Okay? So, I know there's people here today, and, and you know, we've had a prayer time. And it was a wonderful, powerful, anointed time of God. I know miracles manifested here today. I know that. So, so I don't know if I believe in that. I don't care what you believe. I know what I see. And I don't even live by sight. I live by faith. So we might have thought we saw something we really didn't see. But by faith it's happening. By faith it's taking place. But I know there's people that have come in here and they're, and they're literally facing life or death situations right now. With family, with children. I know there's people that feel trapped. Right now, you feel trapped by the circumstances of life. And really, you're under the attack of the enemy. The only hope for you, the only way you're going to survive is to draw near to God. The book of James talks about drawing near to God and He'll draw near to you. And when God gets a hold of you, nobody can snatch you out of His hand. Nobody can. You can't sin your way away from God. Now that wrecks someone's doctrine. When you draw near to God, He draws near to you. When you accept His free gift of salvation, and it's free. Once you get it, He don't take it back. And you might get off the path and stumble and fall and like little babies mess your pants. We're here to help you. We're here to change your diaper. We're here to disciple you. We're here to watch you grow into the man of God that He's calling you to be. It's not going to be easy. If it was easy, this place would be full. It cost you something to give your life to Christ. It cost you something to say, I surrender, really. I know I surrendered nine times before, but I really need it. And that's what I used to do. I'd surrender every Sunday. And back Monday, I was doing the same old thing I'd always done. But the real deal is nobody was willing to disciple me. And we could be disciples. We can learn and grow. We can obtain knowledge to help us. God's put teachers and preachers and evangelists in this house. Amen. And we're all getting in our place. It's a slow work, but it's happening. Amen. It's taking place. Some of you got gifts and talents right now that God's going to use right here. And it's going to change people's lives. But you've got to be willing to say, yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes. I surrender. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. You need to be still and know the Lord thy God. You need to fast. You need to worship. You need to seek Him. You need to know the salvation of the Lord. You don't have to fight. The Lord's fighting for you. The Lord's fighting for your marriage. The Lord's fighting for you against that alcoholism. The Lord's fighting for your finances to be resurrected. He's fought the fight. He's paid the price. You just need to stand and see the salvation of God. God will deliver us and He will show us the plan He has for our life. We just have to be willing to listen. That's what fasting is all about. So Lord, this morning I know there's people here that maybe they're going to try this fasting for the first time. I pray right now they wouldn't bite off more than they could chew. I pray that they would just hear what you tell them to do and they would be obedient. And Lord, I know you're going to speak to them during their fast. I don't care if it's a half day fast. You'll speak to them by your spirit. Lord, I pray for those here today that maybe be lost. And you're really not certain about where you're going to spend eternity with when you take your last breath here on earth. Because I'm telling you, one day every one of us is going to take our last breath unless Jesus comes and takes us out of here. But if you take your last breath and if you're not certain where you're going to spend eternity, you can get that settled today, right now. It's so easy. With the mouth, 
one confesses with the heart one believes. You're saved by grace through faith. Faith in what? Faith that Jesus died on the cross for you. And he rose from the dead. And he's sitting in heaven right now. Praying for you right now. Whoever you are, he's praying for you. He's praying that you'll give your life to him because he gave his life for you. Does anybody need to give their life to Christ this morning? Anybody? Raise your hand if you do. Yes, sir. I see that hand. God sees that hand. More importantly, anybody else? How about this? I want to pray with you, sir, but we're going to pray with some people that need to come back to God. Because there's people in here this morning right now, they've, they've professed Christianity, they've given their hearts to Christ, but they're not living like they're living. They're not living like they've given their heart to Christ. And it's not about works, it's about obedience, but you know who I'm talking to. If you need to repent today, you need to come back to God today, and you just stumbled down a trail, you don't even know how you got there. And that's the way the devil is. He takes you down paths, and before you know it, you're neck deep in this crud. You don't know how to get out of it. If that's you today, I'm not even going to look. You raise your hand and let God see your hand. I'm going to pray for you too. My eyes are closed. I don't need to look to see who needs to repent. It's none of my business. It's between them and God. Amen. So let's pray this prayer together. Father God, Father God, thank you for sending Jesus, thank you for sending Jesus to die for a sinner like me. To die for a sinner like me. I, believe I believe that you rose from the dead, that you rose from the dead. and that your, blood that your blood forgives me of all my sin, past sin, present sin, and even the future sins that I'm going to commit. Lord, I receive your free gift of salvation today. I'm forgiven. You hear me, sir? Back there? You're forgiven. You've been washed in the blood of Jesus. You've been set free, and you'll never be the same again. You're a new creation, the Bible says. And you got to get that settled in your heart. you got to receive that by faith, and you can't listen to the devil when he tells you you're not saved. Today you did it at 12.30 on January the 12th. Today is your day. In Jesus' name. Now the people that raised their hand for repentance. God saw your hand. God knows what you've been doing. God knows what you've been involved with. And now it's time to come back to God this morning. God, I repent. Say that with me, church. God, I repent. For everything I've taken part with. Lord, those spirits that have deceived me, lied me, tricked me, and caused me to stumble. I renounce those spirits. I break the backs of those spirits. And I will not participate with them anymore. I'm a born again child of God. Forgive it. Set free. A new creation. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Even when I've messed up. In Jesus' name. Amen. That's so good. That's so good. Let us be your pastors. Let us love you and to speak into your life. Ronnie, Brenda, Brenda's in the nursery. There are our executive pastors. You know, we're here to help see you through whatever you're going through. And listen, we're going to mess it up from time to time. And you're going to mess it up from time, from time to time. Forgive us when we do. And let's talk through whatever issues come up. I'm so tired of seeing people have issues and leave and not willing to talk through it. We'll talk through it with you. We may get loud. <laughs> but that's just the way we are sometimes. We don't mean any harm by it. Our heart is to see people whole, see people free. 
Our heart is to walk in unity together. It's the devil that divides, separates, and kills. Let's work through the issues that we're going to have. We're going to be the family of God. And when we're the family of God, tell me family don't fight sometimes. Right? <laughs> but you know what I love about family? They always come back together. Because they're family. And we're family. We're family. I wish we could sing that song, We Are Family. <laughs> Bound together by the Father's love. Oh, you're talking about... We used to sing a song when I first got saved at the church called We Are Family, Bound Together by the Father's Love. I can't remember the rest of it, but it was good. Y'all stand up with me. Thank you for uh, being here today, man. There's lots of new faces. And, and you know what? New faces. coming back don't let this be a one shot deal don't leave here and say man I feel better I think I got it now keep coming back and let God do the work that he started in your hearts today Amen. would you promise me that you'll keep coming back I'm not I'm not trying to demand you become a member because we don't have members you come more than twice, you remember. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Father, as we leave today, help us go out with your anointing. Help us go out in your strength. Help us be the church to this community. In Jesus' name, can you say it again?